For those of you that are fans of the Zero Linux distribution, I've got some great news. Steve, the creator of Zero Linux, a few months back, he decided he wasn't going to build ISOs anymore. He wasn't going to build new ISOs of Zero Linux. What he did is he created a Plasma install script, and I actually covered on video his Plasma install script for Art. So you can still basically get Zero Linux, but you do it through this installation script that you run. But people wanted the ISO, and he is now back to creating ISOs for Zero Linux. Now, one of the things Steve is doing with the new Zero Linux ISO is because it does take a lot of work on his part to build ISOs all the time, you know, being rolling release, being arch based. You really need to build an ISO at least every month or so just to keep it up to date. There's a lot of work involved in that. So he is actually asking for people to donate to the project if you want the ISO. So it is paid software. So it's still, you know, free and open source source, right? That's still, you know, completely open source software. But if you want the pre-built ISO, you do need to pay for that because he is in a financial bind. So he would appreciate your help. Now, if you're in a situation where you can't donate a couple of bucks to Zero Linux for the ISO, you can always install Zero Linux through the Plasma install script that I, again, showed you on camera a few weeks back. That is completely free. Just, just run the Plasma install script if you don't need the ISO. For those of you that are interested, interested in Steve's story, he has a blog post here, why is Zero Linux back? And he talks about some of his financial struggles and why he has now decided to start building the ISO again. He also created a merch store. So for those of you that are already running Zero Linux, but still would like to help financially, maybe consider purchasing something from the Zero Linux merch store. For those of you that want the ISO, the ISO is available on Ko-fi and the minimum donation amount is $6. So of course, you can and donate more than that if you could help out Steve. So I've got the ISO and I'm going to run through a very quick installation and first look of this new Zero Linux ISO in a virtual machine. So I've created a virtual machine using VirtualBox here because this uh, Zero Linux ISO, I should note right now, it is UEFI only, so it will not boot if you're using BIOS, although I believe the plan is to have the next ISO be able to boot on a BIOS only machine. But right now it's EFI only, so make sure you have EFI support ticked on uh, if you're trying this out in a VM. So let's run through a quick installation. So American English is chosen for the uh, language of the installer here, which is correct for me. So I'll just click next. The central time zone in the US has been correctly chosen for me. So I'll just click next on that. English US is the keyboard. I'll just click next on that and then erase disk. And I'm just going to give the entire virtual drive of this virtual machine over to zero Linux. For swap, the default is no swap. I'm going to swap to file. Extend four is the default file system. I'll just leave that as is and then I'll click next. Now I need to create my username. I'm going to call my user DT. The host name of the computer is going to be DT VirtualBox. I'll leave that alone. Let me create a strong and complicated password for the DT user and then repeat the strong and complicated password and then reuse the user password as root password. Yes, so that way I don't have to remember two different passwords. DT's password is also the root password. And then I'll click next. And here's our summary. The location looks good. The keyboard looks good. The partition scheme looks fine. I'm going to go ahead and click the install button. It's going to warn me it's about to format the drive and write to the disk. I'm going to click install now. This portion of the installation typically takes about five to 10 minutes on my machine. So I'll pause the video. I'll be back once the installation of Zero Linux has completed. And the installation has completed. That took just a few minutes. Now I need to click restart system to complete the installation. I'm going to do that right now. And the machine rebooted just fine, and you can see we are in a beautiful KDE Plasma desktop. I'm really not going to go into much detail on the desktop. I've covered Zero Linux many times on camera in the past. It's KDE Plasma. It's beautifully themed. You got great wallpapers. You got a, a great KDE Plasma theme. You got great color schemes and icon sets. Everything really does look gorgeous from a, an aesthetic kind of view. You can see he loves floating panels. When I say he, the creator of Zero. Linux Steve. You know, he likes this kind of floating top panel that's got the rounded borders here. And it's very Mac-like in that the fact that you have the top panel, but at the bottom you have a bottom centered dock, kind of a floating dock as well. Now at first I thought this Zero Linux icon might actually be a menu system because you would think the distro logo would be like your traditional kind of start menu, but it's not. This is the Zero Linux 
uh, post-installation script. So I have shown this off on camera. In my previous video on Zero Linux, go check that out. But me and Steve, we talked a little bit about his post-installation script here. This tool allows you to tweak certain settings on the system, to install certain drivers that you may or may not need, as well as do some basic troubleshooting. I think you can run some updates through this as well. It's got a lot to it, the Zero Linux post-installation script. I'm going to close that out for now. Again, go check out my previous video on that tool if you want a little bit more information about it. I was looking for the proper start menu, which is this here, the application menu. This is your traditional KDE Plasma menu. And let's just briefly take a look at what is installed. We have a development category. It's got really nothing of interest here. Uh, you've got basic build tools like CMake here. You've got the icon browser and the icon explorer, really nothing uh, of note in that category. Under the graphics category, we have GwynView, which is our image viewer. We have Ocular, which is KDE's PDF viewer. We have ScanLight and ScanPage for those that still have a need for a scanning utility. Under Internet, we have Aggregator, Aggregator with a K, which is KDE Plasma's uh, RSS uh, feed reader. Kind of a neat tool, not a bad little RSS feed reader if you have the need for one. The default browser, of course, is Mozilla Firefox, which tends to be the default browser on most Linux distributions. Taking a second for Firefox to load. Well, Firefox is loading just fine, but the Zero Linux homepage here took a second to load. Let me make that full screen here. You can see the website is zerolinux.xyz. I like how when I made it full screen that the uh, panel at the top of the screen got out of our way. So that was nice. And the dock at the bottom. You can see, you know, it, we're not encumbered by that useless panel when I make an application full screen. That's kind of nice. If I go into the Firefox menu here and go to help and about Firefox, you can see Firefox is currently on version 129.0. Let me close that out. Under internet, we have KDE Connect to sync your mobile devices, and we have Conversation with a K. Conversation is an IRC chat client. Under multimedia, we have a few different tools here. We have AudioTube, which I'm assuming has something to do with YouTube. I'm not going to click on it because it may be one of those applications YouTube would frown upon. K3B is a disk burning utility, a fantastic disk burning utility, uh, one of the default KDE applications. We have MPV for a video player, which I'm assuming is here because it's a dependency for VLC, which is probably the uh, multimedia player you're going to use vlc plays video all kinds of video formats and as well as audio you can actually use vlc as your default audio player as well if you so choose we have an office category here nothing is in it except the pdf viewer ocular and then the settings and system and utilities categories have your standard kde kind of applications your kde settings kinds of applications now let me open a terminal and check out some things. Let's see if Control-Alt-T brings up a terminal. That's kind of a, a standard key binding that I, I know Ubuntu uh, started using many years ago. And a lot of distributions now kind of adopt that key binding, Control-Alt-T. In, in some distros, not all, will usually bring up a terminal. Luckily, that's what happened here. We do have a very nice little shell prompt, very kind of colorful shell prompt, as well as some interesting fetch information here in the terminal as well. So if you like a little bling in your terminal, uh, I think you're going to be quite pleased with this. And usually, you know, I'll run some commands in the terminal to get the versions of you know, really important packages. For example, the Linux kernel, you know, I would type uname in the terminal to get the Linux kernel version, but I don't have to do that since they have the fetch information here. They're on Linux kernel 6.10. We are using bash 5.2.32. KDE Plasma, we're on 6.1.4. And you can see that we are using Wayland with Plasma rather than Xorg. And you can see Layen is the color scheme. It's, it's the color scheme for everything in this distribution. It's this gray uh, background with a lot of these bright pastel colors. Really quite gorgeous color scheme. Now let me zoom in the terminal here. Let me clear the screen to get rid of the uh, fetch information here. And let me do a Pac-Man dash capital Q lowercase q to get a list of all the packages that are installed. And then I'm going to pipe that into wc dash l to get a line count. This command here will tell me how many packages are installed out of the box on Zero Linux. And 1,560 lines of output in that command. That means there's 1,560 packages installed out of the box on Zero Linux. Now let's see if Flatpak is installed out of the box. I know Steve, he really likes Flatpaks, so...
do a where is flat pack and flat pack is installed i don't think he installs any flat packs out of the box though so if I do a flat pack list, yeah, nothing is installed as a flat pack yet, but it is here. If you want to go ahead and start installing flat packs right away, it's enabled for you. And let me close the terminal. One last thing I want to take a look at is uh, I want to take a look at the wallpapers. Of course, you guys know I've always got to take a look at the artwork of each and every Linux distribution. I'm a, a sucker for good wallpapers. So let me move this over here. And, you know, Zero Linux has always been kind of famous or some really fantastic artwork. You can see this one here. Man, this one here would look great against a light theme because it's such a dark wallpaper. So those of you that are fans of light themes, you know, that this particular black wallpaper would have been very nice. I kind of like dark themes against light wallpapers. But let me see if I can find something that's kind of on a lighter side for the wallpaper. Yeah, this here. That's some nice contrast right there. I like that. Let's see if I can find anything else that jumps out of me. This one here is just some really gorgeous abstract art. Wow. Yeah, I love that. Actually, this whole wallpaper pack is just super nice. For me, I'm, I think I'm going to go with this one. I, this is just, for me, I'm blown away by this. I might have to rip this <laughs> wallpaper off, off from uh, Zero Linux and actually go ahead and save that on my computer. But anyway, this wasn't meant to be any kind of in-depth look at Zero Linux. You guys have seen Zero Linux before. It's a fantastic Arch Linux-based distribution. I know a lot of you guys watching this video probably already run Zero Linux. Really, today's video was just to let you guys know that Steve is building ISOs of Zero Linux again, and he is in a financial bind because the part of the world he lives in, there's a lot of war and strife, and financially, again, he's kind of in a bad way, and he's asking for your guys' help. So he's putting the ISO out there, for those of you that want to donate, please go check out the link I'm going to put in the description below. I'm going to link to the page where you can grab the ISO. I'm also going to link to Steve's merchandise store for those of you that want to help out through purchasing uh, mugs or shirts, whatever it happens to be. Also, I'm going to link to the Zero Linux blog where he goes into depth why he is now building these ISOs again. Now, before I go, I need to thank some of my supporters. I need to thank the producers of this episode, Matt James, Steve, Armor Dragon, Darloff, Daedalus, GD. George Lee, Matthew, Methos, Erion, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astri, Tianren, War, Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode about Zero Linux would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.